Good morning, Michael here, looking at Psalms 8, specifically verse 5 through 9 for the exposition. Let's go ahead and read this Psalms in totality, which is subtitled, How Majestic is Your Name? Psalms 8, verse 1. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth! You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and infants you have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? Verse 5. Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings, and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And from the treasure of David, verse 5 through 8. These verses may set forth man's position among the creatures before he fell. But as they are by the Apostle Paul appropriated to man as represented by the Lord Jesus, it is best to give most weight to that meaning. In order of dignity, man stood next to the angels, and a little lower than they. In the Lord Jesus, this was accomplished, for he was made a little lower than the angels by the suffering of death. Man in Eden had the full command of all creatures, and they came before him to receive their names as an act of homage to him, as the vicegerent of God to them. Jesus in his glory is now Lord not only of all living, but of all created things. And with the exception of him who put all things onto him, Jesus is Lord of all, and his elect in him are raised to a dominion wider than that of the first Adam, as shall be more clearly seen at his coming. Well might the psalmist wonder at the singular exaltation of man in the scale of being, when he marked his utter nothingness in comparison with the starry universe. That made him a little lower than the angels, a little lower in nature since they are immortal, and but a little because time is short, and when that is over, saints are no longer lower than the angels. The margin reads it, a little while, in theory to Thou crownest him, the dominion that God has bestowed on man is a great glory and honor to him. For all dominion is honor, and the highest is that which wears the crown. A full list is given of the subjugated creatures to show that all the dominion lost by sin is restored in Christ Jesus. Let none of us permit the possession of an earthly creature to be a snare to us, but let us remember that we are to reign over them, and not to allow them to reign over us. Under our feet we must keep the world and we must shun that base spirit which is content to let worldly cares and pleasures sway the empire of the immortal soul. Verse 9 Here, like a good composer, the poet returns to his keynote, falling back, as it were, into his first state of wandering adoration. What he started with as a proposition in the first verse he closes with a well-proven conclusion, with a sort of coerat demonstradum. Oh, for grace to walk worthy of that excellent name, which has been named upon us, and which we are pledged to magnify. How majestic is his name, Jesus. Trust you enjoyed the meditation. Michael here yet again declaring, Jesus 
is Lord. Until next time, be blessed.